Today I'm going to draw a foamy aircraft. Foamy aircraft are very simple models. They're the easiest to build in real life. They're the easiest to build in the digital world. Uh, they're composed of two simple flat sheets, one for the fuselage, one for the wing. Let's start with a new sketch. Uh, we'll sketch in the XZ plane. Before I do that, let me explain. Here we're looking at the three axes in space. The X is the red, the Z is the blue, the Y is the white, and the arrows point to the positive directions. Uh, digital aircraft's modelers, air, a physics engine expects you to put the airplane so that the nose is in the positive X and the tail is in the negative X. Uh, the top of the aircraft is in the positive Z. So we'll start with a sketch. I'm going to start with a fuselage. We'll start in the XZ plane. So I'll start at the origin here. The uh, default grid that comes up is 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm going to make the foamy 36 inch wingspan so we'll move that grid we'll change it to a 36 inch span it is fine so now we have a 36 inch grid here I want to go ahead and put a bitmap here that we can trace I've already um, uh, created the grids we'll load a new texture here and these are the two grids there is a side view uh, it's a little yak uh, and a top view that's all we need for this foamy aircraft I'll load the side view I have to go ahead and select what I've just loaded to let it know that's what we're using. I then click on Reset Ratio, which scales the bitmap to its original ratio in here. Um, if I turn on the Aspect Lock, I can change just one of these and the entire bitmap will change. As you can see, I've changed it to 36 inches. And uh, as I told you, the nose should point along the positive X that's out here. So I just flip the X and we're ready to trace. I'm going to zoom in by rolling my mouse wheel. Uh, this is the fuselage here. Uh, the rudder will be separate. Uh, the wheels and struts will also be separate. The spinner will be separate. And in this area we'll put a small electric motor. So let's start with a curve. And uh, the curve is, uh, or the original, um, the way you draw a curve is in straight lines. Um, you can see I've deposited one point by, by clicking with the left mouse button. If I hold down the shift key, I restrict the motion to horizontal. If I hold down the control key, I restrict it to vertical. So holding my shift key down, I'll come out to here. Holding my control down, I'll come down to here, and so on. And what I'm doing here is just tracing the uh, fuselage, and just subtly like this. Uh, it, it's, you can take as much time as you want holding my control key here for this vertical. That's going to be the axis for the um, a rudder and so it's nice if it's uh, reasonably perfectly vertical and it's just like this and you'll see that this is actually a curve we'll make that conform better to that outline here in just a second um, holding down my control for this vertical my shift for this horizontal I'm not quite on the line but that's not a problem here I'm going to close the polygon by clicking on the first point that polygon is now closed as I told you this polygon is a curve doesn't look like one these are the points that I've deposited. In between you'll see two control points between each of the points. Um, these points here, this control point and this control point, control the nature of this curve around this main point. I'll go ahead and grab a hold of one and pull on it. And you can see that I can do about anything I want with that curve. Um, if I hold down my control key, I can move just the one I've got a hold of here. So I can make pointed uh, divisions along that curve as well. Right now we'll just make it match that curve reasonably well. Uh, this one, I don't want to move this, so I hold down my control key and move this up like so. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in on this by rolling my mouse. I pan the view by pressing the mouse wheel. Uh, now I'm going to move this. Um, I go ahead and uh, hold down my control key, so I'm only moving one side of it like so. And you'll notice that I'm actually making this um, in the same direction as the incoming curve here in order to get a smooth transition there. That looks pretty good. Again, I'm using my mouse wheel by clicking it to pan around, zooming in on this area here, and I will do the same thing here and round this curve out a little bit, just like that, and, and here as well. Let's go and do this one as well. I'll pull this down like so. And you can see that I didn't quite match underneath there. Not a problem. It's going to look just fine. Once I've done that, I have the polygon drawn for the fuselage. Let me rotate the sketch view so you can see that what I have there is a simple line. 
It has only two dimensions, in this case, X, Z plane, as we specified. Now, the Z is the top of the aircraft, the positive X is the nose of the aircraft, and the negative X is the rear of the aircraft. What I want to do is extrude this. I'll go to my poly and select that polygon. It is now selected. You can see it turned blue. Go to my Tools tab and click on, click on the Extrude. Um, the selected edges is what I want to extrude. I, I click on that. Now, if I extrude this without the end caps, it in effect will be a hollow pipe. I do want the end caps because I want the sides of the fuselage to, to fill in. Uh, for the distance here, I'll leave it at 2 so you can see that. I'll perform the extrude and you can see that I've made a 2 inch uh, pipe and uh, the end caps are in place. Let me rotate this around a little bit so you can see that. That's 2 inches thick. And of course that's too thick for our little foamy. Uh, we'll change it to maybe a quarter of an inch, which might be a little on the thin side, but it'll look fine. So now we have a quarter of an inch uh, fuselage there, and um, that looks great. Uh, let me go back to the sketch flat view, and uh, we are finished with that. Uh, let's do the rudder while we're here. Um, I'll go ahead and use my curve tool and click somewhere around where I want it to start here, holding down my shift key to constrain that to horizontal, holding down my control key to constrain that to vertical, bring it down to about where I want. Here I'm not using any constraints. I'm just going ahead and moving along and clicking. And uh, this looks like it's a little bit of a curve, but it's so small I'm going to ignore it. And I finish the polygon by clicking on the original first point. Here I'm panning, holding down my mouse wheel while I move the mouse. And here I'm going to go ahead and use my control key. So I, oops, uh, you have to have this off in order to be able to move the points. So I'm holding down my control key. And uh, again, making this collinear with this line coming in like so, we'll make for a smooth transition there. So I finished that up, and uh, I, I happen to know, I've set it up, so that this one will extrude improperly. We'll go ahead and click on it. Let's rotate the view. The uh, polygon is selected. We're going to extrude it so that it matches the fuselage. Go to my Tools, Extrude, Selected Edges. Everything here is already set as it was because we just did it with a fuselage. I say Perform Extrude and OK. You'll notice that this looks different than the fuselage. Now, I did this on purpose to show you. I'm going to rotate it and you can see that the uh, uh, it looks like you can't quite see the front face of this rudder. I hope that comes through on the video pretty well. It looks like this because the visibility of the polygons is dependent on the rotation order on screen. You don't need to worry about that. You can simply, this is the rudder, this object here, you can go ahead and select it, right click it, and say reverse the point order. And that will straighten that out. Anytime you run across that, and you will run across it occasionally, that's all you have to do to fix that. Uh, it's also a good idea, by the way, while we're here, to rename these objects. This was the fuselage, and this one here was the rudder. Uh, if you don't name them as you go along, it can get a little bit confusing, if you have, especially if you have a lot of objects in the aircraft. Let's flat view in the uh, in the drawing again. Turn off the rotate so we can work. And I'm going to do the uh, wheel here. Uh, I'll use the circle tool for that. I'll put the dot somewhere near the center of the wheel. Click and hold while I draw out, and uh, that is where we want that for this um, strut. I'll use the line tool and make a simple closed polygon, about like so. This will actually be attached to the same uh, control rotation controls as the rudder, so that it moves with the rudder when we move the wheel. I need to extrude these. I'll go ahead and select the polygons, go to my tools, extrude selected edges. I'm all set up and extrude it and say OK. I uh, need to do the same thing with the circle. I still have the select polygon set up. I'll extrude that a um, quarter of an inch, perform extrude, and OK. The, uh, the wheel, rear wheel, uh, tail wheel, and the tail strut, the rudder, and the fuselage are finished. Let's go ahead and do these two fairly quickly here. I'll use a circle for the wheel just like I did on the tail wheel. Come in here holding down my mouse, my left mouse button, and then I'll use the line tool. Now this strut is actually going to angle out away from the fuselage, so it needs to be a little longer than it looks in the drawing. So I'll start up about here. It's not critical um, if it turns out that it looks a little too short. We can always modify it a little bit later with, uh, by modifying the uh, dimensions of the uh, object. Um, I want to select these and uh, extrude them just like this. Extrude select edges, uh, perform extrude, OK. 
and for the uh, circle that we make our wheel and you know I'm making a, an extremely simple uh, wheel uh, you could take as much time as you wanted to you could make a profile and revolve it around here to make round wheels and so on for this little electric I want to be as uh, quick as we can uh, just to show you the principles of drawing and so these little flat wheels will be just fine we're ready to make the spinner um, I'll go to my sketch uh, I want to use a curve for the spinner I'm going to click somewhere around the uh, nose I'm going to use my shift key to make a horizontal line coming back and my control key to make a vertical line and I'm going to close the polygon now using my control key I can go ahead and pull this up to imitate the curve we want there just like so and that's maybe not quite I'd like to have a little point a little more pointed than that and that looks pretty good I'm going to rotate this drawing because we're going to use the revolve tool for the first time here and it's easier to see if it's at a little bit of an angle but let's go ahead and select that object or that polygon we select it that's the one we want to revolve I say revolve and I don't need end caps uh, if I were only doing 180 degrees you would probably want to cover the ends with little plates and that's what the end caps are here I'm going to go 360 degrees and so I don't need the end caps or the end sketch uh, or any of these things so but I do need to select my axis this is the axis right here that we want to revolve around and then I say perform revolve and OK at that point we have created uh, our um, let me rotate this we've created the spinner uh, that we are going to use for the aircraft uh, as you can see it has a faceted appearance uh, that's because the program converts the curves into small linear segments imitating the curve based on parameters you have set up if you if you select this uh, curve like so you can say curve edit and you can change aspects of that curve and how it's created in this case this is just fine for us um, the faceting you want to keep uh, you know to a reasonable level um, the finer you get this we did this in 12 segments if we had done it you could have done it in 1200 but it creates so many polygons that it can slow down your graphics coprocessor so for this 12 is fine and I'll show you why let's rotate and you can see the facet appearance if I, this is the object we just created if I right click on it and say shade I'll move this over so you can see it happen Take, watch this while I do this I'm going to say apply shading and when I do what it does is it interpolates or averages the normals of all of these facets so that it has a smooth appearance that is a very acceptable way of making smooth objects normally of course you're not this close to the spinner normally you're out somewhere around here and it's perfectly convincing um, so we now have our spinner in place let me flat view again turn off the rotate just because I'm going to be drawing here I'll zoom in I'm going to make some little shape here to make into our electric motor and so I'll use the line tool for that I'll click somewhere around the back of the uh, center line of the spinner and using my shift key come out here horizontal this is going to be my rotation axis using the control key I'll come up vertical and I'll go ahead and uh, I'm just free forming here using my shift key coming across I'm going to make two little ridges on the motor here just for the fun of it and this I want to be somewhere near straight up from this point and that doesn't look too bad like that and uh, I'll go ahead and close the polygon by clicking here this shape we're going to do the same thing we're going to revolve it uh, let me rotate so we can watch that occur. I've selected the polygon. I go to my tools menu item revolve and select the axis. This is the axis that I want to revolve around. I say perform the revolve and OK. In this case I could go ahead and shade that uh, or I could leave it. It kind of looks nice uh, faceted like that. It has a sort of a mechanical feel to it. Um, however perhaps we'll go ahead and shade it. I'll right click it and say shade and apply shading and close this and you can see now that it's smoothed out these little facets back here again you're never really going to be that close you're going to always be at a distance and it's very acceptable if you were going to make something that was larger you might want to make it in 24 segments instead of 12 uh, let me flat view on the side here pan over and show you that we have everything ready to go on our profile view um, next thing to do is the wings I'll uh, go ahead and do that in the next segment of this video thank you for watching